Travels by Broomstick comes to you from South Wales, the land of the dragon. Oh, and sheep. We got lots of sheep. Welcome to all you good people out there in podcast land. So let's get the broomstick out the garage and off we go. A hidden hoard of silver, gold and precious jewels where suited sleeping knights await where a wizard casts his spells and a weird stone is found. Today's journey takes us to Alderley Edge, a village in Cheshire in the northwest of England. We decided to walk in the footsteps of the wizard and what a perfect place to start our journey than having a hot chocolate and some cake from the wizard tea rooms before stepping into the magical world that is the amazing Alderley Edge. The author, Alan Garner, who wrote the children's fantasy novel The Weird Stone of Breisingerman, which is set on Alderley Edge, lived on Trafford Road in Alderley Edge. Born on the 17th of October 1934, this English novelist takes traditional British folk tales that are rooted in the landscape and history of his native Cheshire and makes them his own, often using the Cheshire dialect. Some of his other books include Moon of Gomrath, Elidor, The Owl Service and A Bag of Moonshine. In the mid-19th century, Alan Garner's great-great-grandfather, Robert Garner, who was a stonemason, carved the face of a bearded wizard onto the side of a cliff on the track towards Castle Rock. The carving is situated above the magical well known locally as the Wizard's Well. As a child, Alan Garner and his friends often played in the forest of Alderley Edge. They spent their time there in search of the wizard and the silver-suited sleeping knights from the local folktale. We told this tale in our previous bonus episode, linked below. The magic of the edge was not only deeply rooted into Alan Garner's imagination, it was also deeply rooted into his life. The Weird Stone of Brisingerman was Alan Garner's first novel. The book is set in Alderley Edge and it follows the magical adventures of two children named Colin and Susan, who are sent off to live with their mother's old nursemaid Bess and her husband Gautha Mossack, while their parents are overseas. While exploring the edge, they encounter creatures known as the Spart Alpha, goblin-type creatures with big ears and pointy teeth who dwell in the abandoned mines of Alderley Edge. These Sparts want to capture them, but luckily Susan and Colin are rescued by the kindly old wizard named Cadellin Silverbrow, who tells them that dark forces are in search of a magical talisman known as the Weird Stone of Brisingerman. A shape-shifting sorceress called Selina Place and an evil wizard named Grimnir want the weird stone of Brisingerman for themselves and a battle of power commences. We wandered along the path in the wonderful woodlands, sun shining through the trees, birds singing their merry little songs and the leaves rustling in the breeze. It all certainly looks magical and soon we reach the Svart Alvar's lair, the old mines of Alderley Edge. Archaeological evidence indicates that copper mining took place during the Roman period and a Roman coin hoard was found here as well as evidence of early Bronze Age mining. Written records show that mining continued in the 1690s up until the 1920s. The engine vein mine is 750 metres long and 60 metres in depth. There are 18th century coffin levels which are narrow mine tunnels that have coffin shaped sections cut out into the rocks. There are also patches of green malachite still covering the rocks. We follow the path with no signs of the mischievous Svart Alpha and make our way to a circle of stones. Could this be where the witch Selina Place performs her magical rituals? The Circle of Stones is in fact called the Druid Stone Circle. Originally composed of 24 stones, it is a decorative folly that was created by the landowners, the Stanleys, in the 18th century to enhance its magical landscape. As we walk deeper into the woodlands, we come to a path that has some small steps. This is the way up to the Armada Beacon. Built on top of a Bronze Age burial mound or bowl barrow, it is almost the highest point on the edge. It was used as part of the chain of burning beacons to raise the alarm 
throughout the country during the invasion of the Spanish Armada, during the reign of Elizabeth I. The stone building that housed the beacon, which was a fire set in a basket, was set in the perfect vantage point that was visible for miles around. Just below the beacon is a spring called the Holy Well. This well was a place of worship in ancient times, with people still performing rituals and leaving offerings at the well today. The Holy Well is said to have healing powers that are able to cure many different kinds of ailments. People have been known to wash in the water, drink from it, and coins have also been tossed into the stone trough as wishes and offerings to the well deities. It most certainly feels like a sacred and spiritual place. A short walk from the Holy Well is another well known as the Wishing Well. This has a circular stone trough with magical waters that are said to grant many wishes. Continuing on our quest to find the Wizard of Alderley Edge, we emerge from the trees at Castle Rock, which acquired its name when the last Earl of Chester decided to build a castle here on the rocks in the 1200s. But it was abandoned soon after its construction. There is no castle standing here today, just amazing views. On a good day, you can see for miles and miles. We leave Castle Rock and walk back into the woodlands along the rocky outcrop, being careful to look for any magical creatures that may be hiding amid the many cracks and crevices of the sandstone rocks. There are many areas that could be inhabited by different fairy folk, and I almost expected the dwarf named Rathror to be standing in front of us at any given moment. The sandstone rocks of Alderley Edge tell the tale of time. Millions of years ago, when Alderley was part of a hot and sandy desert, there were dramatic storms and floods. Rivers appeared suddenly and then dried up. Each rock tells his unique story. As soon as we turned the corner, there in front of us was the wizard. The wizard's well. The carving of the wizard on the rocks with the words, Drink of this and take thy fill, for the water falls by the wizard's will. As mentioned, these words in the wizard were carved by Robert Garner, a stonemason and the great-great-grandfather of Alan Garner. It is a truly magical sight to behold, with the well waters dripping from the overhanging cliff rock to the stone trough below. But still, no sign of the wizard himself. We make our way to Stormy Point to visit the Devil's Grave. Stormy Point is a rock formation overlooking the northeast slopes of Alderley Edge, with impressive views over the Cheshire Plain, all the way across to the Pennines. Stormy Point is mentioned in the Legend of the Wizard as a way marker on the farmer's journey to the Wizard's Cave through the magical Iron Gates. It is also where Colin and Susan play together in the book The Weirdstone of Prizingerman. The narrow chasm running along Stormy Point is known as the Devil's Grave, in the book, Gowther tells Colin and Susan that if they turn widow shins anti-clockwise three times, then the devil would be summoned. It is also the gateway to the caves where the Svar Alfar dwell. In reality, the devil's grave is actually a shallow copper mine that dates back to the Bronze Age. Fearing that the Svarts are watching us, we make our way through the woods onto the Golden Stone. The Golden Stone is a mysterious boulder that is said to contain magical energies, radiating a golden glow. It is here that Colin and Susan met a Stromkarl. They had come to a junction in the path and to their right stood a boulder, a freestanding block of conglomerate sandstone, quarried from nearby Stormy Point, a boundary stone between the parishes of Over and Nether Alderley. This was commonly used for the exchange of goods for money. The stone was possibly a Bronze Age standing stone, then reused as a boundary marker or mere stone since time immemorial. In the legend, the farmer rode past the golden stone with the wizard on his way to the magical iron gates. Lastly, we strolled down the long straight path of the Elvin Road. The wizard Cadellin took Colin and Susan from Stormy Point along a broad track that cut straight through the wood as far as the open fields, where it turned sharply to twist along the meadow border of the woodland. This, the wizard said, was once an elf road, and some of the old magic still lingered there. Svarts would not set foot on it, and the moth brood, which Selina place, would only do so if hard-pressed. We got back to the wizard tea rooms, but still there was no sign of the wizard. Even so, our hearts were filled with the magic of Alderley Edge, and our heads were filled with our own bewitching adventures. 
You're a wizard, Harry. So how many brooms do you give Alderley Edge? Absolutely five brooms. What was your favourite magical landmark in Alderley Edge? I thought the wizard's well. Yeah, the wizard's well was exactly as I pictured it, reading the books as a teenager. What did you think was the best? Well, although I thought that the wizard's well was the best, um, I loved the carving and everything, my favourite was actually the holy well because I found it really peaceful, really tranquil, kind of hidden out of the way. I could just imagine fairies flitting around. It was just so beautiful. But I also loved the golden stone that had a magical energy to it. And I really liked the stone circle because um, I could just imagine Selena Place doing all her spells in the middle of it. And even though it was man-made and not a natural occurring phenomenon, I just thought it was a beautiful place to sit and enjoy the scenery. I think we should mention the views as well. The views absolutely stunning over the Cheshire Plains. Yeah, I really like the view from Stormy Point and Castle Rock. They're both absolutely stunning. On a clear day, you can see for miles and miles. What is your favourite character in the Weird Stone of Brisingerman? Hmm. Well, I've got two, I think. Cadellin, obviously, and Durathror, the dwarf. Did you think it was really magical being in Alderley Edge after reading the book? Oh yeah, without a doubt. You can just relive the book. It's fabulous. Do you think that somebody who hasn't read the book will still have a magical experience when visiting Alderley Edge? Well, the Edge is a beautiful place. Whether you've read the book or not, it's still a good place to go. Do you think they'll be able to find the wizard if they go to Alderley Edge? The wizard's well. The wizard's well, yes. Not the actual wizard. Although, maybe, who knows? Who knows indeed. The wizard's well, in fact, all the wells are quite difficult to find. But if you follow the wizard's trail you almost inevitably will come to the wizard's well. Only those who are pure of heart will find the wizard's well. (laughs) How did I do it then? (laughs) Well, this concludes our exciting adventures for today. I hope you've had a magical time. I'm supposed to say that. (laughs) Well, I did it this time. (laughs) 